Warning. Stupid ass opinions are ahead. Proceed at own risk. The time has come. It could only be one game that was rigged to win. There could only be one game that was paid off. Only one. But you know, it's the Game Awards. It's, it's, it's THE awards. Oh, yeah, no. If you don't get a Game Awards, you're basically just a shitty game. You're just not good. That's just how the rules are. I don't make them up, but I do like them. Definitely played most of the nominees. Like, um... Um, but Bald Gate, I loved that one, yeah. Oh, and how could I forget? Resident Evil, I think, fa four. They really only made three of these. Wow. And what a goddamn year it has been. Just so many good titles. And you know, I you know how I know it's good? It's because I looked online and it said, yep, this one is good. This one has a high open critic. I did not play most of these nominees. Um, I know I'm a, I'm, a, I'm a good liar. I am a good liar. So you may not have been able to tell, but I am a, sorry. The only time I'm gonna drop everything to play a new game is if I'm absolutely invested in that series. And I love the first Alan Wake. But I'm not a huge Remedy fan, I'm not a huge Spider-Man fan, and so on. I'm gonna drop everything to play the new Mario or the new Sonic, but it's like... I just am a lot more invested in getting through my backlog of games that I'm still really interested in. Uh, old games that I've still been wanting to play through before I get to something new. And you know, the thing is that leads to me not really being as up to date as I'd like when it comes to new releases. So I may not have the most informed selections. So you may be wondering, Jibran, you stupid fuck. Why? Why the hell are you doing this? Well, voting in the game was is a fun little thing. So without further ado, I'm, I'm not gonna start on game of the year right away i'm gonna start on esports i'm gonna you know work backwards because it can be really anticlimactic when you end up at esports at the end which as you know i am part of an east i am part of many esports teams they have not accepted me yet but i i, I like to think that you know it, they, they know me they know me they know me yeah i'm not really big into esports um you know they they they, they, they do still know me they do still know me but this, this isn't my thing at all. If I care about any of these, it's Evo because, you know, I've gotten quite into fighting games. I love fighting games and uh, to be honest, they're just way more entertaining to watch. Um, even, even though I don't really know what's going on, uh, sometimes when Evo is going on, I do, I do tune in. That's cut and dry. I don't know what the, I don't know what any of these other four are. I don't know what a Valorant is. I don't know what a, what does that say? Championship is. It's Evo. What more can you say? Whatever. It's time to move on. Oh, thank you. Thank you for that. Best eSports coach. Just take it, take it, all of the things I just said and apply to this. I don't, I don't know, man. Any, any of them could deserve it. But I think of all of these people, he's bald. So. He looks, he looks miserable. He looks miserable. That's my vote for eSports coach. Best eSports team. It's an awful lot of eSports, um, here. Uh, sorry, S-Bots. There's two Valorant? What? Two Valorant teams? Okay. I don't know. And not, not, not that I have a problem with either of these people, but why, why does Valorant have two spots? Shouldn't there be one per game? I don't know. I mean, okay, from all of these games, I like Counter-Strike the most. I've been playing it a lot recently. Counter-Strike 2, you know, the friends. So, f*** it. I love Team Vitality. I have a Team Vitality shirt, poster, Team Vitality plates. I don't have any JD gaming plates in my house. Where the f***? Eeny, meeny, miny, mo. What this guy? Yeah, okay, we're getting into the games. God, I'm actually getting scared. I'm gonna actually have to make some decisions. Um, but with this one, it's easy for me. It's, it's Counter Strike 2. Like I said, it's the only game out of all of these I actually play and you know enjoy. I, I like CS. I, I mean, I don't really care for any of these. But yeah, okay. Oh, this is easily people make games. God, you know. Again, no hate to any of these other people. I'm sure they don't launder money, whatever it is YouTubers get up to these days. People make games is incredible, and if, if you hate games journalism, you should get into watching these guys because they report on some genuinely great stuff. Roblox, they made two Roblox videos where they got threatened, I think, by the actual company. They do a lot of investigative stuff um, on the industry, and I think they're kind of, I think they're a shoe in mainly because of the fact that this stuff is run mainly by game journalists. Love their content. They don't make games, but they do make videos on people that make games. And you know, it's kind of, that's what it's all about. It's all about blowing our minds with this stuff. These are all fine. I mean, the I feel like the only, <laughs> I don't give a fuck about Star Wars Outlaws. I'm sorry, I don't know. It just feels, it seems like there's no reason to really be excited about this. Like a Dragon, Infinite Wealth. Eh, I'm not a Yukuza fan. I am a Tekken fan. I love Tekken. And you know, I've been following some things about 
the game, but you know, it looks great. It looks overall more... I want to say aggressive than Tekken 7, and also graphically, it's like a whole decade um, above what we saw in Tekken 7. It's like such a big jump. There is the second most important thing, gameplay to consider, but who cares about that? You know, I mean, I, Tekken 7, Tekken 8 gets my vote, but I will say, um, it would be nice if Hades 2 won this. Not because I have played it, um, I have never played Hades, but it is an indie game. I don't know. I like rooting for the underdog. Yeah, f okay, I vote. I'll give them my vote. Wow, what a contrarian. Oh, God. Okay. See, now, the best adaptation. See, the thing about this category is The Last of Us is here. And as, as we know, at The Last of Us Awards, whenever The Last of Us is present, they are gonna give, um... You know, they, they are gonna give them a award. I cease to be able to speak English whenever I start recording for anything. I don't know why. Truthfully, I don't- I don't think The Last of Us deserves this. The difference- okay, I- I'll admit, I have not seen these two. I have not seen Twisted Metal. Again, I, I don't really have the best, uh, perspective because I haven't seen those. I can't really compare it, but I, I also didn't really see people talk about them a whole lot. You know, do I have a really- a reason to think that these three are gonna win it? It's me- it's between these two. Look, I- I- I like The Last of Us. Don't get me wrong, it's just that they didn't really do very much to change what was in the games, you know? It's like they basically had it set out for them. The Last of Us is closer to a movie. Now, it's not it's not like the Telltale games, but it's a very cinematic game. Taking that to the television medium, they didn't really change or do that much. And it's great, sure, it's it's good. It's faithful, for the most part, to what The Last of Us is, but they didn't really have to make that much legwork to take it to a different medium. You can't say that about the Mario movie, which did it so, so seamlessly, you know? There's a lot of things in Mario that could have felt kind of out of place in a cinematic movie, because it's a video game. You don't take video game rules and put them in a movie and just drop them in like that. It can be kind of awkward. I think the Mario movie did a really great job of taking those elements, taking those characters, and making a story that, you know, is, let's be honest, overdone, and making it stand out. Sure, I'm not saying it's like one of the best things ever, but I loved, I loved the Mario movie. It was such, it was a blast to watch. I think from everyone that I watched it with, I enjoyed it the most. I don't know. I mean, at the end, yeah, it does, it does come down to personal enjoyment, but I think there is an argument to be made that the Mario movie had a lot more hurdles to jump over, as opposed to The Last of Us, when it was going to be an adaptation, and that is what this award is for. It's the best adaptation. I don't know. I just think that the Mario movie did a lot to also disregard the notion that it was going to suck. Illumination, man. Illumination is not high-tier animation, you know? They're not a DreamWorks. They're not a Pixar. They're not even really a Sony picture, so they're Illumination. For them to defy the odds, and I think make something that's genuinely great. But again, the thing is, if this this is a 90% game journalist jury and 10% us, between the two, the Mario movie did get lower critical reception, and it's not perfect. This is the Last of Us Awards, so it's gonna get it. See, this is a strange category, mainly because I don't know what the hell to vote here. I also don't know why these are the selections. This isn't a game that I have played. You can call me a, a faker or anything, but it just feels kind of weird that Battle Bit isn't actually here. You get why Lethal Company isn't, because, you know, it just it just came out recently, and I, I have only played that a few times. It's really funny with friends. I don't know, Battle Bit Remastered just seems like it was a really it was kind of a big deal because I think it, at one point it had more players than the actual game it was modeled after Battlefield. Mario Wonder is like the best game here to me. It's not a game where I um, felt the multiplayer was anything exceptional, I don't know. Was there really not another game that they could have put here? I'm happy it's here, but I don't know. Street Fighter 6 seems to have a lot of great multiplayer features, like being able to fight someone, search for a match. I'm just shooting in the dark that I don't really know what to vote. And what was next? Sports! Racing! Yeah, wouldn't you know it? I don't have any thoughts about this. I'm not gonna vote for anything. I mean, actually, no, 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 no. I just, something just caught my eye. The Hot Wheel. I fucking love Hot Wheels. And do you know what? Now that I think about it, I did play the first one. So, I pretty much played the second one. And it gets my vote because it doesn't have a year in the name. It's not made by Ubisoft. And I don't have a problem with this thing, but you know, I gotta be a contrarian. I just have to. Strategically, I totally forgot that there was a Fire Emblem game that came out this year. Damn, I don't really know if people like this or not. I don't know anything about Fire Emblem, I just heard that it was kind of a 
downgrade from three houses. There was like, quite a lot of people. I want to say memeing, but I, it was probably more like making fun of these two's toothpaste hair. It's kind of irrelevant because I haven't even played the game, which, you know, is what I seem to be very good at because I haven't played this, I haven't played this, I haven't played this. I have played Pikmin 4. Technically, it's like the only one here that I've actually gotten a taste of. Like, it's complicated. I'm not a Pikmin fan. I am not someone who has played the games and I don't really know in depth about them, but I've played like an hour of one three and four. Three and four being the uh, demos that they released on Switch. I actually played the four demo very recently, so it's quite fresh in my mind and it was fun. Yeah, no, it was it was a chill time and I was thinking I'm gonna be really bored of this and that I would want to turn it off quickly, um, which is the exact same thing I thought with Pikmin 3 and then just like with Pikmin 3, I actually got really sucked into it and the only reason I haven't picked any of the games up myself is because I haven't really had a good reason to. I've been pretty busy with other games. Pikmin 4 was fun uh, from what little I've played of it. Um, fucking Pikmin, I guess. I don't know. I didn't play Ukraine, I mean, uh, Advance Wars either, but I remember that that was delayed for a whole year. If I had to say what I think is actually gonna win, which is what I should be doing. I mean, I don't know, I, I guess it could be either in the, the Nintendo ones. I played Civilization VI one time, so I feel like I'm kind of an expert in this game. I, I don't think it's gonna be Advance Wars, mainly because it's a remake. I don't know, remakes don't really tend to get those kind of awards, I feel like I've noticed or remasters. I'm sure it was good. They tend to favor new experiences uh, more, is what I wish I could say, but it, you know, I guess it doesn't. Need... I'm a very inconsistent person, aren't I? Whatever. There's three Nintendo picks here. I feel like it will probably be Pikmin 4. Pikmin 4 was really beloved when it came out, and uh, I think I got quite a lot of good reviews, and it stood in the conversation for like a month. Fire Emblem is just like high rush in that it just re it released at the beginning of the year, and people just kind of forgot about it seemingly. Like, I completely forgot that a whole ass Fire Emblem game came out this year. But yeah, I think it's gonna be Pikmin Fall. Which is why I voted for. Oh god. Oh god. This is a biggie. Okay, actually, that reminds me. Best Family is a stupid, stupid name for this. I really, really hate this category. It's the- it's- okay, it's like, it's the Nintendo category. Which, it's like the unspoken rule. It's the Nintendo category, which made it all the more funny, if, which in 2021, I think it was, uh, Nintendo <laughs> didn't even win. It didn't even win the, the Nintendo category, which, yeah, I guess only two games here on Nintendo. And, you know, there's Disney Illusion Island, Party Animals, which has, like, three nominations here, I think. God damn. It's wild that that's here, because that just seemed like a gang beast ripoff. Never played it, and, I mean, I don't know, it looked cute. It did look pretty cute. But on to the fact that Sonic Superstars is here, which is the only only thing that it's nominated on. It's one of like two games that I actually complete <laughs> that came out this year. The other being Mario Wonder. Okay, so Sonic Superstars was my most anticipated game of the year. It, of, of, of everything that was coming out and that has come out, it was the game that I was most excited for. I was really, really excited to play it. And I knew Sonic's track record. I was thinking, yeah, I mean, I shouldn't expect too much of it. And to be honest, I'm mostly... <sighs> I was mostly whelmed, but I was kind of disappointed by it in a lot of ways. And I feel like the cracks for it really started to show more after I uh, played Trip's story. It's a good game. It's in no way in hell deserving of this award, which it won't get. Mario Wonder is here, which was way better. I mean, it's not even close. I liked Superstars a lot. And I think there's some good ideas in this game. I haven't played Disney Illusion Island. I've seen gameplay of it. It looked pretty decent. Pikmin 4, I know, is good. Considering how people rave about it, I'm, I'm sure it is a great game. A great polished game. Sonic Superstars is not polished. That's kind of the biggest thing here. I'm gonna vote for Mario Wonder, which I th think is gonna win. Um, I don't I don't think any of these other ones are gonna take it. But f*** me, I mean, <laughs> it's the Game Awards. They will look you straight in the eyes and be like, the award goes to party animals, and you're just gonna have to accept it. Now, I have actually played Mortal Kombat 1, you know? Uh, don't ever say that I'm not up to date, because I have tried my best to play it. Here is gameplay of me playing it. Isn't, is it not? Is it not? Is it not? It is. His sh** would not run, and I don't, I don't really know 
what went wrong. Um, I do actually have the minimum requirements, so it should have worked. Uh, I don't know. I think the, the biggest culprit is probably the fact that I don't have an SSD more than anything because I don't even know how to describe what's going on there. I really wanted to play it, or like get at least two hours uh, on the game and then refund it. Street Fighter 6, I played the demo of, not the full game, but you know, in the demo, they do actually give you full access to World Tour. Your progress is saved and you could take it to the full game if you ever buy it. I only played an hour of it, but I did get a feel for the actual combat and it was really fun. You know, the thing is, I, I haven't played the game, so I, I'm probably talking out of order here, but it might be the best Street Fighter just based on how much I've watched it. What I felt playing it, it just felt like the most movement felt really good in Street Fighter 6. And it also just has a lot of shit. And I think, you know, from all of these, I, I'm pretty sure I did review the highest, so I, I do think it's gonna win. I've never heard of God of Rock. I've never heard of Pocket Bravery. I don't know. The, it's pretty cool that two indie games, I think they were indie games, got nominated here. And I'm just God, I'm glad that they didn't, I don't know, nominate God of War Ragnarok again or some shit. Because when they nominated Sifu last year, it was just kind of embarrassing because that it's not a fighting game. I don't know. I think all things considered, I kind of like Mortal Kombat more than Street Fighter in general. This does look like the best Mortal Kombat from NRS yet. I wouldn't really know. So it's good. I'm gonna, my, my vote's gonna have to go to Street Fighter here. I do think it's gonna win too. It's just, it, it made such a big splash. All right. Best RPG. God, I mean, I haven't even gotten to Baldur's Gate 3. I, I need to, I, I do feel the need to say that it is probably gonna sweep everything it's involved in. I haven't played it. I'm not really got much interest in playing it. The more, the what I know about Baldur's Gate 3, which is A, it's the, apparently the best fucking thing in the world since air was invented. I don't know, the, 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 the praise for this game has been crazy. I just, people have not shut the fuck up about it. I feel like a game has to, it has to be really good really good on some level for people to not shut up about it for this long or it's overhyped but yeah i'm not i'm not saying anything i haven't even played it i think the thing for me is it just it does not appeal to my gaming sensibilities at all you know i've seen gameplay of it i know what the kind of overall deal with it is and why it's acclaimed is because there's a lot of polish and detail in to your decisions and i think a lot of the things you do in the game genuinely matter and it's apparently to an astounding scale, which I mean, I have to commend that. I think it remembers like really minute details that affects everything that happens in your playthrough of the game. That's cool. On the other side, we have Starfield, which I think, you know, has such amazing FPS mechanics in that it doesn't really have a many on my screen. I can't comment on Final Fantasy 16, but God damn, it's, I, I totally forgot that, that came out this year. That's crazy. It's such, it's been such a crazy year. I'm not a Final Fantasy fan. I do want to play them. It's just, you know, they haven't really gotten up ahead on my list. Cause so much came out this year. Sea of Stars is like the only game here that I've played. And I actually played a few hours of it. It kind of sucked me in, which it's, I'm not really the type of person to play traditional RPGs. I do, I do play Pokemon. So I do know a lot of things about traditional turn-based games like press X. But the thing about Sea of Stars was that you didn't just press X, you pressed X on time. It's fun. Um, I actually enjoyed playing the game so much so that I'm actually considering finishing the game because, you know, I, I noticed it was on the PS Plus um, ultra mega library thing that they introduced this year. And I thought, why not give it a chance? So it, my vote for this um, goes to that game, mostly because it's the only one here I've played. I might be a little bit biased. I might. I might. Best action adventure. I don't really know who's gonna win this for sure. Cause it really does feel like one of those things where, you know, with the Game Awards, it could go anywhere. I'm veering towards Tears of the Kingdom taking it. Not because it's my favorite game here. It's also the only game I've played here, which is funny because um, I was not, I did not feel Tears of the Kingdom at all. I have to go into detail to be able to articulate what I didn't like about it, but it just feels like Breath of the Wild again in a way that I'm not, enjoying. The first few hours were really, really promising. And I, I think those hours in the, you know, the beginning temple area were really fun. But then when it came back down to Hyrule, I just kind of, <laughs> I just got bored. Look, the thing is I've only played the game for about five, six hours, and there's probably a lot more that will keep me interested in the game, but it just isn't really doing it for me. And that said, it's still okay. You know, it's not bad. It's not mediocre it's just i don't see what everyone else sees it's really kind of disappointing for me to feel that way because i was pretty excited to play tears of the kingdom on to the other four which i didn't play 
if you hadn't noticed. I think if, if Tears of the Kingdom doesn't take it, it's probably going to be Alan Wake 2 instead. It got a really good reception. Not just from critics, but you know, just from people in general. Spider-Man 2, bring on from my perspective, seems like it's just kind of more of the same of the first game in that it doesn't really change the formula more that it just adds on to it you know in terms of mechanics which is fine and just i don't know my prediction is i think to the kingdom it's probably gonna take it pest action hi-fi rush that's all i'm gonna say my vote is hi-fi rush you know it's this is yet another game i didn't beat god damn it is high up on my list i loved my time with it and i just love everything about this game's aesthetic it's so clean you know so stylized i'm just a sucker for these kind of vibrant cell shaded type games i love it the other four again i don't know if you guessed this but i didn't play them. dead island 2 i'm surprised to see here because this game didn't seem like it was um raved about that much so for it to get a, an action game nomination you know with, with a no with a games to nominate from from the games here i feel like hi-fi rush is gonna take it. It, it has to right i don't really know enough about the other games to really be able to say i didn't really hear enough about remnant 2 or ghost runner 2 i know i know i mean pop popularity doesn't not guarantee a win i mean no, no, i'm hoping it's hi-fi rush and i also think there's a pretty good chance it's gonna be that game too just so rhythmic you know so fun just fun best vr ar wow i know nothing about these i love hello kitty yeah what's that Fuck yes it's pizza tower i loved i love this game holy shit, it is a thrill to play it's exhilarating it has all this personality it was not nominated for the best indie game why why i don't know no one will know because dave the diver just had to get a nominate i mean we're not even on that category yet but pizza tower gets my vote on one hand this game is you know they are brown, you know, I mean, if, if it gets the victory, I would not mind that because I don't know if you guys know this, but I am also brown. But yeah, no, Pizza Tower easily gets my god damn, what a game. This game deserved, It's it was snubbed for other categories. <sighs> this is one of them. I think a lot of people are probably already familiar with the controversy. Dave the Dive, in fact, I'm actually just gonna... What the fuck? 2.74 trillion JPY. Jippy. That, that's how much Jippy they're worth. And you, like, it's so ridiculous. F absolute bullshit that this game is being considered here. Because this, th what do you, for outstanding creative and technical achievement in a game made outside the traditional publisher system. That is as traditional as you could get. I'm sorry, but that's ridiculous fucking stupid it looked like a fun game and i'm sure it's fine but it's not deserving of this nomination it's kind of ridiculous i think do i need to point at the jippy it doesn't need to be here sea of stars also is um again like i said a game that i played a few hours of but it gets my vote i don't actually know who's gonna win that though is the thing like i really really hope dave the diver doesn't because there will be anarchy by anarchy i mean there's gonna be a few angry people online you don't do you do you really want that i don't i don't think you do I don't think you want that. Why the f*** is Destiny 2 here? Cyberpunk obviously has the whole redemption thing behind it. I still need to play it, you know? As in, I still need to play it. Every single goddamn game they show on this stupid page. You know, my friends actually are really, really big into Cyberpunk. And uh, they have been for like, ever since it came out. And, uh, you know, occasionally we'll talk about it. And they always do tell me, you know, it's a lot better. A lot better than it was before. But the thing is, Baldur's Gate 3 is here. And I think if I'm not wrong, this game, Larian are very, very in touch with the community i like a good redemption story and the thing is uh no man's sky is here for a similar reason in that it actually turned itself around and added so much more content instead of just leaving it instead of being abandoned and the thing is so many games so many goddamn games have come out not really been that good and then they've just left them to die i'm gonna vote for cyberpunk it seems like it would be deserving of that best ongoing is that not the same thing as community support oh well that's irrelevant because fortnite is here it's gonna win if it doesn't win there will be riots and by riots i mean someone's gonna make a youtube video about it and that will be me i'm currently recording this on the 
4th of December? No, well, it was 3rd when I started, but... And that's after uh, Peter Griffin. Peter f***ing Griffin has been added into the goddamn game. It's glorious. I don't know, it's spectacular. It's bombastic. It flabbergasted me. Peter f***ing Griffin. And the thing is, they didn't just add him into the game. They made a Family Guy funny moment for it as well. And uh, they, they gave him the Peter copter when he's buff Peter, which is a reference to one of the episodes. It's like even last year, the, the, the sh silly shit that Fortnite does. It's not even just that. It's like the, the shit that they make. Bringing back like the OG map and whatnot. Fortnite deserves it. Uh, not a lot of games could, six years on, be surprising people like this. Uh, oh, but you know, I, I just noticed. Oh god. Where is Overwatch 2? Huh. I, that is peculiar. I really, you know, because it's, they've done such a great job of adding, um, money. Games for impact as well. God damn. Um, I, again, I mean, I don't know, they are brown. But the thing is, you have to understand, it's not just that they're brown, it's that they're making brown food. And I like food. That is my reasoning. Um, Goodbye Volcano High is probably gonna win it. I don't really know anything about these games. I just know people will really make fun of this one character having um, a really big snout. Speaking of snouts, this is the innovation in accessibility. I did, I did look into a few of this. It's not really something that I can speak on in terms of how it affected me. Between those two, which were the, you know, the main ones I really looked at, I'm gonna say Mortal Kombat 1 because they added a pretty funny screen reader to the game, which just lists out, you know, a reptile, tears out Kitana's flesh and throat and eats it and then stomps on it, blows bubbles <laughs> on a dead corpse. It came on by accident when I was loading the game. With innovation and accessibility, as long as the game actually did something with it, I feel like people people are fine with any of these winning. As to which one I think it could win, it could be either of these. I'm gonna vote for Mortal Kombat 1, um, because that's the one that I know I have not played. Any of these, god damn my stupid crappy attention span of not being able to finish my stupid backlog. I haven't played any of these and I don't know the performances, but consider the fact that the Game Awards wants to be taken seriously so bad. They want to be just like the big boys in the Oscars. A chance to get Idris Elba speaking on stage over John Martin, my favorite voice actor. I mean, obviously I have no sources to back that up, but I am right, I am never wrong. I'm not gonna vote for him. I don't know who to vote for, yeah. I actually, no. Yuri Lowenthal, because I like Sasuke. And Yuri Lowenthal in general has been in a lot of games. This is Hi-Fi. Hi-Fi Rush is literally an audio designed game. But you know, I think the Game Awards do, they do go crazy for horror type stuff. And Hi-Fi Rush, I feel, has to take this. Not only just because um, it's the one I like most. <laughs> the whole game is about rhythm and it's about timing everything to the beat. The, the stages, the bosses, everything is set to the music, to the drum beat. And it's just, the whole game is based around audio and sound design. If it doesn't win here, I'm sorry, people don't know what the f*** they're missing. But the thing is, it's 10% us, it's 90% jury. This game was very well liked by critics. I feel like it's a safe bet to say it's gonna win, and I hope it does. Best score, oh god, we're getting really, we're really getting close to the um, big boy categories here. Well, first of all, I should say the best soundtrack of the year was the Peter Tower soundtrack, because it just f***ing slapped. Oh god, slap isn't even a good enough word. It f I'm not hating on these nominations. The thing is, I, I, I did actually want to listen to these songs, you know, certain songs from these games. Baldur's Gate 3 was kind of the most boring to me. Like I said, it does not appeal to me, you know? The the game, the, the whole fantasy medieval aesthetic, I it's just, you know, it's not, it's not my thing. So, I, you know, the thing is, I, I naturally kind of veer away from that kind of stuff. Alan Wake 2, I thought, had some pretty good songs. Final Fantasy 16, okay, you know? I, I wouldn't say it was bad. I wouldn't say it was mediocre or forgettable. One of the songs had like 16 million views and it was just okay, you know? <laughs> For me, it's between Hi-Fi Rush and it's between Tears of the Kingdom. I think the thing about Hi-Fi Rush that might be against it is, it is all rock. You know how the Game Awards hates rock music? You know, they have never invited Mick Gordon on stage to shred. It's just, you know, with the game, awards they could have nominated sonic frontiers for best soundtrack last year which is so amazing that three songs three vocalist titan songs have become some of the most listened to songs of sonic at all um on spotify apparently it just wasn't f***ing good enough it wasn't even better than plague tale requiem which no one you, if you put a gun to someone's head and said 
All right, sing the Plague Tale Requiem theme. What, what would you, where the rats? Where the rats? You know you would you. But uh oh, here comes God of War Ragnarok, which had such classic sounds. That was probably the best God of War song. I will admit. My point is, if they're gonna give that. The award over Xenoblade 3, or oh, hell, even Metal Hellsinger, you know, it's it's pretty clear. They just have a, a, a bias towards orchestral soundtracks at this point, because that shit was ridiculous. In fact, this shit is ridiculous, but that, that shit last year was even more ridiculous. I don't know who decides these things, but they need to get better music taste. I think it's going to be Baldur's Gate 3, just because of the fact that, you know, it's the game this year. Um, that people are raving about. I didn't think the music was good, very good, but that's just me. And the thing, I, I'm sure I would have enjoyed it more if I'd actually played the game, which, you know, is it could be a good blanket statement for this entire video. Best art direction. This is a tricky one. You know, because there's no um, Baldur's Gate 3, so I don't really know who could win this. From the gameplay I've seen of Alan Wake 2 on Liza P, I'm, I'm gonna regret saying this, but it seems like the most normal one here. It didn't really even seem as visually compelling as Control did. I'm not really, I don't know. I don't think it's gonna be Alan Wake 2, especially when you have High Fire Rush and Mori Wonder. It really, I think it's between those two because as good as Tears of the Kingdom's art style is, and I, I do think it's really a beautiful game to look at, this art style was pretty much already awarded in 2017 with Breath of the Wild, which is why I don't think it's gonna spe sweep up like it did in 2017. Hi-Fi Rush, on the other hand, I feel like it basically does what Zelda tries to do with its kind of cell shade look with so much pizzazz, it's so comic-y, there's polish, all over the visuals, it just, it's so vibrant. It's very nice to look at 100% of the time. Tears of the Kingdom has some really fucking rough moments. Even just on this, this little page, you can look at all of these and your eyes immediately go to this one because you have these sharp black outlines. God, not even just black outlines. It's beautiful is what I'm trying to say. And it hits that comic Saturday morning cartoony aesthetic so well. What they accomplished on the Switch with Wonder is so impressive because it's not just the fact that it looks like that, it's the fact that they got it running at 60 FPS and that the game constantly changes these visuals. It it, it, it changes from world to world, changes from level to level. The thing is I haven't finished High Fire Rush so I don't know if it does a similar thing or if it just kind of retains that. It seemed like it basically retains that same aesthetic but Mario Wonder changes quite a lot. So again, it could be between the two, my vote goes for Hi-Fi Rush. I think both are really, really visually compelling games. I love how they look. I don't think it's gonna be either one of the, those. Um, If it is, I'll probably shit myself. Best narrative. I'm, I'm not gonna waste too much time explaining the fact that I haven't played these games, but I will say Baldur's Gate 3 is here, but as is Alan Wake 2, and the thing about these two is I've okay the remedy games that I've played have been Max Payne, Alan Wake 2, Quantum Break, and what I know about Remedy is they are big on pushing big narrative. Honestly, some of the best at that that I've seen from many games, like Max Payne in particular, was so influential to that type of game. When you when you see games like The Last of Us or Uncharted, oh hell, Gears of War, they they kind of take from what Remedy does in a big way. I haven't played it, but knowing the critical reception and knowing what people are saying about Alan Wake 2, there's a very, very good chance it could be this game. Recency bias does play a role into this, but again, this is Baldur's Gate 3, which everyone is saying is better than six. So my vote goes to fucking Alan Wake 2, I guess, because I played the first one and I thought it was great. Uh, now, Alan Wake 2 is high up on my list. So I do actually need to check it out. Best game direction, Fuck if I know. Okay, don't, don't, Pitchfork me, Sony fans. I'm only saying this because of what I've seen, and what I've seen is that this one doesn't really change all that much from the original game. I don't really know anything about Alan Wake 2's um, gameplay besides the fact that it seems like it largely carries what the first game does. I got, I, I could be sounding so wrong here. I'm sorry. The only games I've played here are Mario Wonder and Zelda. You know, Baldur's Gate 3 is here, and what I know about how it memorizes what you do and that it's like a DD game but it's like the most perfect DD game ever made or something I, the fact that it's that detailed and some of the things i've heard about it 
kind of impressive. Does lead me to believe that it could be, it probably will be Baldur's Gate 3, but on the other hand, I think people are kind of, um, kind of forgetting that. This kingdom was pretty damn impressive, man. And again, this isn't a game that I really liked. The whole fuse mechanic, like thinking on like a programming level of the stuff with the rewind, ultra hand and ascent, you just wonder how the hell they did it on, again, the Switch. The Switch is so outdated. For Nintendo to accomplish these two games on the Switch I, is 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 worthy of so much praise. No other company could do it. And then, you know, then there's Mario Wonder, which is so innovative for 2D platformers in how every level you can't predict what is going to be around the corner. When a new 2D platformer comes out from now on, we're, we're going to be comparing it to Mario Wonder. We're going to be comparing it to Tropical Freeze and Rayman Legends and, you know, Sonic Mania, I guess. But Wonder is going to be another bar for it to reach. My vote goes to it. Just how surprising and how genuinely happy the game made me with the random ass shit that you wouldn't expect you know because it just it had these like really minor systems in place specifically um for that one level i would venture as far to say that it deserves it more than any other game here but again it, is it bald gate it is not bald gate so oh shit we're at Wait, what? I was a bit confused there. I thought there were two more categories after this and then I remembered. There's one that I just did not cast a vote for, but this is the main conversation here. Which game is gonna get? Game of the year. It really does need to be said. It's been a hell of a year for gaming and no year is gonna come close to this for a while. Not in 2024 or 2025. Yeah, and also last year, you know, the, the, the past two years have been so like neck and neck in terms of quality game releases. You know, a lot of people forget, yeah, last year had, it had Sonic Frontiers, it had Kirby and the Forgotten Land, it obviously had Elden Ring. It's been really great, you know, cause I, you know, it's, it's really shut up people who've been sitting there talking about the fall of gaming. I'm especially after the whole COVID years of 2020 and 2021. It's been nice. But the question is, which game here is going to get game of the year? First of all, I just want to say I don't think Resident Evil 4 belongs here. I'm sorry. I don't even need to have played the game. It's just, it doesn't belong here. It's a remake. There's a lot of games that came out this year that I think would have been equally as deserving of this, like Gollum, or perhaps Sonic Supers. No, I'm sorry. I, I can't even joke about that. As for which game is going to get it, man i mean my my pick is mori wonder any day of the week a super inventive imaginable fun platformer that just had me happy all of the way it has issues yeah it's like such a big step for 2d mario it's my favorite 2d mario game now as well you know it, it takes it takes a lot for a game to get me to scream and say holy sh every 20 minutes but mario wonder did that so much that i got tired of being excited the thing is when you look at the full package maybe it's not a perfect game i think those top tier moments make up for it and uh if, if game of the year is the game that really stood out the game that delivered on all aspects when it comes to sound visuals gameplay the only thing it doesn't do is story because it's almost glitchless it's a really fun game it's beautiful to look at it doesn't have the story to back it up which is why i, I don't think it's gonna win and you know and then it goes down to really these three i'll make two and baldur's gate three tears of the kingdom i don't think it should be tears of the kingdom i mean i'd, I'd be I'd be relatively happy if it was because it, it is it is a series i love i love zelda i don't think it would really be deserving of that not over these two or at least i don't know i haven't played i'll make two all i know is baldur's gate three is gonna win this <laughs> it's the thing is there is a contest here but in terms of the sheer hype that the game seem to have generated and the fact that it's still being talked about and the fact that i think it's you know it has an equal meta score to tears of the kingdom it's gonna be Baldur's Gate three again my vote goes to mario wonder and uh there is no previous okay unless i i may be a contrarian but i also am spineless so yeah i'm done i'm actually nominated i have voted for every single character and i took the piss with every single carry with a long video that I didn't think would be this long. And now I gotta go tell others to vote. I gotta go out into the streets. Also, I don't really have anything else to say. Besides, uh, well, the potential reveals. But the, th but the thing is, I need to set something free. I am the long lost bastard of Jeff Keefley. Because of our spirit connection, I know the final reveal. And it's crazy. Crazier than Crazy Taxi. It's taken me some time to come to terms with it, but fucking, I guess the world needs to know for some reason. Because it seems very important to leak things and ruin planned surprises. It is 
Fuck.